Hello, I'm going to talk a little bit now about the new SID ripping functionality in Music Studio version 2.2.0.6. The SID ripping functionality has been improved in this version compared to previous versions, which makes it a lot easier to rip music and also instrument and sound effects from SID files. So I'm going to start with creating a new document and then navigating down to the rip SID option here. I'm going to first open one of the previous files which worked rather well, which was the Wizball uh, Game Over music, I think it was, the electric guitar sounding one. Uh, you can see that this Wizball SID file actually defaults to track 8, which is the track that we're interested in. This rip SID options window has been improved now, so you can actually choose which track that you want to rip. It shows you how many songs or tracks were in the original SID file. It also has something called force note table for instruments, hex, space, or comma separated values. Now we're going to leave this blank, but I'm going to take you through this and what it does later on. So as before, we could hear the SID play, and then we press the OK button on the dialog box to stop the capture of the SID music that we want it to rip, and then we can play music. So you might notice that straight away we were able to click play music. There wasn't any manual editing that we needed to do going into the track edit mode, we can see that it's added the hard, res hard restart disable command that started with the first of every block in each track. And the capture actually looks quite clean. Uh, the capture also sounded pretty clean. So uh, this is an improvement compared to the previous version. But where the real improvements are is actually the force note. Uh, as the force instrument as note uh, table instrument. And I'm going to show you that now. So if I create a new file again and then go back to rip SID, this time I'm going to rip the Turrican 3 SID. I'm going to choose the default track 2. Now we're going to listen to uh, the Turrican SID file and then we're going to improve it. So without using this note table for instruments configuration yet, we just press OK. Then, then we get that lovely track, and uh, one of the tracks was a really good drum beat in the background, and then there was a, a couple of lead, uh, the bass line track, and then there was the lead track on top of that. Um, so if we play back the music now, it's not too bad, but it doesn't sound quite right. And that's because I've been experimenting with this file already. If we play the music while muting the other two tracks, the drum track doesn't sound very good. It's captured it as well as it can, but if we look at track three, it's block two. If we go and look at block two here, we can see that um, it's captured quite a lot of notes, and that's because the drums are actually quite a complex sound. Um, it's also, so if we look at what envelope, envelope is using, not instrument, but envelope, it's using, we can see this using envelope number three, or envelope number three, however you want to pronounce it, it's fine by me. Um, if we go to Envelope number three, we can see that it's using wavetable. Wavetable starts at position seven. We can see that it starts with a noise waveform that goes into, I think, four when it's a pulse waveform. And then it releases the gate and it's you know looping around and stuff like that. Actually, it's, it's finishing, which is really interesting. Um, that's very interesting. It means that. Actually, this instrument is a six, seven, eight frame.
frame is long and then it finishes, it doesn't output any more uh, control bytes. Really interesting to note. That's why it finishes. Anyway, so if we play the... It just sounds like that. It's quite boring, but you know, I'm looking at this and I'm suspecting that envelope 3 is... or instrument 3 is... Um, of the drum sounds that isn't being captured correctly. If we scroll down here, we can see that envelope five is also probably a complex drum sound. Yeah, if we go to number five, we can see that the wavetable starts at F. If we scroll this over a little bit, uh, the wavetable starting at F goes uh, noise, pulse, noise, noise, pulse, noise, pulse. There's a gate hop in the middle. Um, it, repeats at position 12, so it's, it's repeating at the start of the gate hop. Um, if we play it, yes, it, it does it does does sound like it's meant to be a percussion instrument, um, but the percussion instrument is not captured that well uh, because it's capturing a lot of notes. Remember this is block two. So if it's capturing a lot of notes, what I can do is that I can take a screenshot which I'll do here. Here we go, this is block two at this position. We'll keep this for later. So I'm suspecting here that um, envelope number three and also envelope number five, envelope, um, is a percussion sound effect. Um, if I scroll through, I can also see uh, a long some potential percussion instruments, maybe. Um, but we'll keep on going through here, and we can see here that wavetable 20 uh, may also be a percussion instrument. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So what we can do is uh, we can use the functionality for forcing these Envelopes, instruments, what you want to call them, as capturing note information, um, which means that it doesn't need to add the notes to the blocks. It can actually add the specific notes to the note table. So that's what we'll do. So we'll close the file. We'll create a new file. We'll go back to RIPSID. We'll choose the same Terraform file as before. But this time, what we'll do is that we will force instruments, envelopes, 3, 5, and A, this is in hex, don't forget, we'll force these as capturing notes. So when we do this, we have a K. Um, if we go back and, and look at the block now, and we can scroll down, we can actually see already that instead of lots of notes, it's just captured one note. And if we scroll down here, we should see, yeah, instrument envelope number five um, has also captured one note. So if we go back to what the screenshot was, on the right hand side here, if we go scroll back up to position 1D, let's do that. We can see here it's not captured a ton of notes, it's just captured the instrument. And if we go back now to this specific one and we do play, yes, that's also fine, but notice that it's created a note table now. So if we go back to the note table, we can see that there's a whole bunch of notes. This whole bunch of notes is, is very indicative of being able to capture a good percussion sound effect. And if we go back to envelope number five, Note table C also has this kind of arrangement of note data. And if we play this envelope, yeah, cool. It's more of a percussion sound effect now that we would expect to hear. And also if we go to A, then it's got a nice little blip at the beginning and it's got that sound at the end. Um, the note table starts at 17. And it kind of like indicates that that's you know, what we should be hearing, which is fantastic. Uh, so we now go back and we play the music. Our 
my drum track sounds a lot better. Let's, let's isolate that by muting the other two tracks. Fantastic, isn't it? So now we, we basically captured the drum sound effects and we also captured the synth bar which, which makes it a lot sound a lot better now in total. <laughs> So then we can just save that and we can open it up again, we can edit it and stuff. Now if we go back to the extended view here, uh, the general information will tell us what SID file was the original SID file, the tune that was used and false notes for instruments, options as well, just so this kind of information is not forgotten. Another example is with another of my favourite pieces of music done by Martin Walker from his uh, music demo, which is Walker's Warbles. Uh, if we choose to rip Sid for this one, and I open the file, uh, we use the default options again, but with no boss table instrument. <laughs> It's got some wonderful melodies in it. Anyway, so if we have a look at the wave tables here, and we scroll through for a bit. Now, I've looked at this SID file already, so I know where they are, but basically um, envelope instrument number four, uh, with a wave table that starts at eight. If we look at it, eight is very obviously some kind of percussion sound effect. But it doesn't sound great without the note table. It sounds not too bad, but it's not quite right either. And if we look at, uh, Envelope number four, I think, uh, I forget which track it was in. I think it was in the last track. Yeah, and then we scroll down here. You see it's, it's captured a whole bunch of notes again. So, envelope number four is, is a candidate for forced uh, note table capturing. Also, number five, again, percussion instrument. You can see here it starts at wavetable 13, lots of noise, noise. Uh, what's one zero? It's it's a triangle. Yes, that's right. A noise triangle, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, good candidate for forcing as a note table capture. And then the last one <clears throat> was number nine. Number nine actually doesn't exist yet. Now, number nine will exist when we start forcing instruments to capture as note tables because what this does is that if an instrument diverges from the wave table, the pulse table and the not note table then it will create another slot in the envelope table and it will allow it to use notes and stuff like that. So later on we, we will need to add it to the list. But first of all what we can do is we can close the window Open it again. Go back now. Uh, go back to the rip SID option. Bing this. And then we'll enter the first two, which is instruments envelopes number four and five. And now if we go back to instruments four and five. Much better. It's actually got a. It's actually got a good note table now. So if we go back to the note table, we can see that it's captured some notes. And if we go back to number five, much better now. So it sounds really, really good now. Now if we go back to the uh, the, the wave tables and the instruments that were created, the envelopes that were created. If we go down now, oh, it hasn't actually created number nine. If we capture more of the music, I think then. Uh, it was creating this instrument too, but we will just leave it at that point there. So if we play the music now. So we have a good, a good drum beat now, which captures really quite nicely. And 
we can use the same kind of uh, methodology for other SID tracks as well. It's just a very scalable model for identifying what are the potential percussion sound effects and seeing if they can be captured more comfortably like that. Of course, we can load and save these instruments as well and import them into other tracks. We can cut and paste these blocks and then move them into other tracks as well. And we can create new music based on music that we've captured from other SID files. So thank you very much for watching. Um, this SID file capture is really, really relatively nice quality now. It's really quite usable quite pleased with it.